Good afternoon everyone. This is a brief review of my first impressions of the CB Gen 4 EFI system. As you can see, I've got EFI running on the Big Beef manifolds. Very brief description of the engine, so 84 by 94 stroker VW Type 1 equaling 2332cc webcam 86c camshaft roughly 308 degrees duration 270 degrees actual duration at 0.050 inches pushing in the region of 200 horsepower on the crank um, for the gen 4 my initial installation the pros everything that is required for the install is in the kit um, relays fuel hose wiring every everything that you need all gaskets it's all there um, regarding the fuel hose i've had a bad experience with a set of icts before um, where the fuel hose that i was supplied with from cb cracked as soon as I bent, bent them so ever since then I've thrown away all CB fuel hose and I replaced them with you can see it here 20 bar fuel hose that's about 300 psi um, fuel system only runs at 4 bar 20 bar gives you plenty reserve um, more pros system simple to set up ECU works um, absolutely no magic to it it fired up very first attempt first try it idled um obviously not perfectly but yeah for a custom setup and a custom engine i was very happy with that the auto meter tachometer works perfectly there's absolutely nothing to worry about with that um ever since install after Having run the engine a few times, a um, little bit of tuning on the ECU, it starts up first try, first time every time. Um, being that it's no longer carburetor, you don't pump the gas. I find the engine starts very quickly with my foot off the throttle, whereas with the carburetors you have to pump and play around a little bit. Um, if I open the throttles and try to start the car, it doesn't like to start. Um, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, I've also got the idle air controller. Um, yeah, so pros are basically that it's it works extremely well, everything's there, and it ran without issues. Um, cons. My list of cons is actually fairly large. Um, starting with the wiring loom. The... Previously I ran the Magnatec crank trigger, the wiring loom came complete with all the wires needed for all options that you may be fitting. Uh, if you didn't need, an, need the options, you just didn't connect anything to the wiring. Um, my wiring loom came with enough supply to run the system with everything stock, but if you want anything extra, like the general purpose outs, the GPOs, if you want the extra exhaust gas lambda sensors if you want anything extra you have to fit it yourself now that obviously assumes that you know how to plug into these special fancy plugs that come with the system i don't know how so items like my oil cooler fan i've had to run off my fuel pump relay so anytime the fuel pump runs the oil the oil cooler fan runs which isn't exactly ideal you should be able to set the temperature at which it turns on and off um, throttle bodies, another con I would say for the throttle bodies, 48 millimeter throttle bodies. A 40 mil throttle body is good enough for 200 horsepower. 48 millimeter is just ridiculous for a street engine. And granted, the car, car drives extremely nicely, but it would have been nicer with 42s or 44s. And anyone needing 48 throttle bodies has got so much money in the engine they're probably running a whole tech ecu um, as you can see i don't use the cb hex bar linkage purely because 
I can get it to synchronize well, but I can never get it to return to zero properly without added springs and added faffing and it just doesn't fit as well as it should. It's good if you're running a set of 36 or 40 IDFs on a 1776 flattering around town, but on a, on a fuel injection system where the carbs have to be perfect, I don't feel it's good enough. So I replaced that with a C, CSP center push-pull linkage. It's absolutely fantastic. You'll see I've got one return spring just helping it all to return. Um, the way that I've set it up, my throttle bodies, the butterflies are fully closed at idle. My idle air controller, through a bit of setting and playing with the computer, I've set, I've set it to close to a minimum of 25%. So, so it's always 25% open or more. It opens further should the ECU call it, but it will not close less than 25%. At this 25% on my engine, the engine does not stall when it's cold. There's absolutely no problem with idling. When I idle at traffic lights, the car still, the, the idle speed is perfect. Uh, it's a little bit low, but I've set the ECU to maintain at 1000. Come off the gas, it drops down to 800, 850, and then rises back up to 1000. Um, with an, another con regarding the fuel injectors this time. The fuel injectors, I've got this, the big beef manifolds. As you can see, I've had to turn my fuel injectors forward aft instead of inboard. Reason for this with the big beef manifolds, it, you cannot get the plugs on the fuel injectors with the fan shroud installed. Um, so I had to, let's see if we can see it, I had to notch the, the fuel rails slightly. Let me get the ruler out. Yeah, you can see the notch to get the plugs on and off. I've had to do this for all, all the injectors. Also with the big beef manifolds, the link, the install kit for the fuel rails doesn't actually reach the fuel rails. So I've had to make my own fuel rail retainer. Just a little simple setup to push the fuel rails down so that the o-ring seal and things work the way that they should. Okay. Um, a big negative regarding the idle air controller. Uh, it came with fairly small lines, hoses. I cannot remember what size. It's probably about one eighth inch. Um, I could not get enough air through those to get the car to idle on the idle air controller. I've since opened it up to half inch. You can see the one line running to there. Half inch hose onto each from from the idle air controller into each throttle body. Um, I've opened up the the size of the ports in the or at least the size of the fittings on the idle air controller as well as on the throttle bodies. Ever since doing that, my idle has been stable and I've been able to actually set the idle air controller so it doesn't stall. Um, again, regarding the instructions for the idle air controller as well as vacuum, um, you've got manifold air pressure map which is fed back into the ECU. The, instru in the instructions tell you to put the map hoses onto the idle air controller. Um, in my opinion, all that this does is it reads the pressure in the idle air controller, not in the manifolds. Um, with the idle air controller set open slightly, you're reading, man you're reading atmospheric pressure no matter what the engine is doing. So I had to reroute it. I've plumbed in from the CV Magnus spark, the, from the crank trigger, I've plumbed in the, the vacuum adapter plates. So each of these plates fit under, fit between the manifold and the throttle body, and they feed a hose which then feeds into the ECU. So you can actually get your manifold pressure. Um, 
this seems to be working pretty well I've been advised to put a small fuel filter in the line to dampen the pulses but in general I'm quite happy with the way that the engine's running I'm going to be adding the fuel filter at a later stage just to see how things work and yeah that's about it as far as programming goes I'm going to do that on a separate video but in general I'm I am very happy with the system um, one little small note to make possibly your fuel pressure sensor this I've put down so that there's no chance of any bubbles getting into into the system no air can affect the readings that I'm getting on my of my fuel pressure my fuel pressure readings if it was if it was up here there's a, there's a chance if there's no flow through the through the line there you could end up with bubbles air on your sensor and give you false readings the way that I've run it now fuel comes in from the one two side displaces the air goes up displaces air right through the hose through here displaces air up all the way to the fuel pressure regulator and then displaces the air out and back to the fuel tank all right guys thanks for watching feel free to ask any questions and if i can i will answer them cheers